but I am going to ram something down your throat as I did to somebody in the gym the other day. Simon of the Board A-hole here. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And that's right. Today, we're going to talk about muscle growth. We're going to talk about muscle synthesis, the thing that you wake up dreaming about, thinking about, tantalizing about every single day. Now, I am sure that in many ways you are doing a majority of these exercises. But if you have hit a plateau and you are struggling to put on size, these are the ones that you must utilize in order to encourage and push through muscle growth. And there's eight of them. Screwed up the title. Number eight is squats. That is right. I am not saying that you have to load up the bar with hundreds upon hundreds of kilograms of weight. But what I am saying is that if you can get a decent squat going and you can be intense with it and you can get into that sort of eight to 12 rep range and really be shaking, waking while also being safe, you are absolutely going to force and push muscle growth. You just will. That is what will happen. Because think about it. What aren't you working with a squat? If you do a normal squat right now, you mostly have to use your legs and you do use a little bit of your upper body. But as soon as you put that extra excess weight onto your shoulders and you do go down, you start from the car it comes up through your hamstrings your quads kick into gear your core obviously is keeping you balanced you're not going to get much from the chest but your shoulders your arms there will be a little bit of a stimuli there and also again there's studies out there that say that if you do have a good old hardcore leg session that your testosterone levels temporarily will increase a little bit and hopefully you can get some muscle growth from that but for the people that are really struggling to get an overall physique that they're happy with or at least struggling to get any extra evolution with their overall physique always go back to squats don't even call it squats if you don't want to just think about what the idea is bend your knees and put yourself in a somewhat vulnerable position with a load on your back and then try and get back up to standing of course your body's going to have to react because if it doesn't you're going to die which is the same with number seven deadlifts the clues in the name it is a deadlift it is the most weightlifting of all the weightliftings because all you have to do is have a dead weight on the floor and you pick it up. Then you have to do it with the right form. You want to make sure you're pushing from your legs. And you want to make sure you're not bending over too much so you don't hurt your lower back. But because that is the way you do it with your shins to the bar, once again, your legs are going to fire. Your core's going to fire. Obviously, your back's going to fire a lot more too. Your biceps and your arms are going to kick into gear. Maybe you get a little bit in your chest, but it's not going to be massive. Your trapezius, though, they'll certainly be helping with the load. And that is just so you couldn't get more simple right there are so many other complex exercises that people want to say oh this is the secret this is what you want to do and you're like why would i want to make it more complex when it could just be pick up this heavy thing in order to teach myself to pick up a heavier thing and there is no other exercise on the planet that is as good as that as opposed to the deadlift there's just not and that is why it's my favorite exercise now that doesn't mean you go in there and you put 250 kilograms on because you're going to hurt yourself the gym is a dangerous place and you absolutely have to be careful but master it Master the art of the deadlift. Take your time with it. Add 2.5 kilograms on here, there, and everywhere. And before you know it, you will look at your physique and say to yourself, it's not going to be drastic, but you'll just look at it and go, you know what? I look a tiny bit better because you've pushed muscle growth. And you're probably realizing there's a pattern here too, but it's important to remind you of these stuff. In number six is shoulder press. For all the reasons we've already talked about it. I mean, you're taking your lower half out of the equation, but your core's still gonna kick into gear. But now you are working your arms and you are working your deltoids and you are working your traps. And you're gonna be working your upper back a little bit too. Now, I mean, all I've really done here is started to talk about compound lifts, but I really do feel in 2022, especially given the people that I talk to on Instagram DM is where it usually goes down. Compound lifts are kind of being ignored because everybody wants to isolate and isolation exercises are great. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, but you also absolutely have to be nailing your compounds. Because when you do do a compound too, you're going to work stabilizer muscles. And when you work stabilizer muscles, you don't really see these. These aren't a part of the aesthetic makeup of the muscle, but they're going to help those muscles. They're going to help those bigger muscles not only look better, but be supported as well. So with that shoulder press, you all you do is go up and you go down. Just grab a barbell. Just do it with the barbell to start. Most barbells are 20 kilograms. If you can smash out, if you've only just started at the gym and you can smash out 20 reps with a naked barbell, well, you're already doing great. And then again, put on the little weights, build up, build up, build up. Before you know it, same thing going to be happening. And number five is dips. Now, dips don't get talked about as much as I think they should do. Because once again, it's just a very naturalistic exercise. Like you could do this anywhere. You could do it in your house. You could do it outside. All you need is two structures that can hold your weight and you can dip away. Now, once again, we're cutting the legs out of it. But the reason the dip is so good is because it's going to fire up every single muscle in your upper body. Like, and if you bend forward, you're going to be working your chest more. If you bend back, you're going to be working your triceps more. But I think what I'm trying to get at here in terms of pushing muscle growth 
And there's two other, maybe three other exercises on here that I think tick the same box. You want to be able to do things that you just would do in your everyday life. So for example, if you fall over, what do you have to do? You push yourself up, or in this instance, it's a dip, but it's that same kind of a, a, a motion, right? You're putting force here in order to go in the up direction. So if you can do a bunch of dips and you can get to the point where you're doing weighted dips, that is a great way to indicate that you are forcing and pushing this muscle growth and you are getting bigger and you are stimulating them. Alternatively, you try and do a dip and you can't even do one, that's something that you need to look at, right? And I, people think the dips are like some kind of lame exercise because you, no, one, no one's doing 150 kilogram dips and if you are, you're using fake plates. But that's not the point of it. It's a functional exercise. It's gonna help you in your real life as well. And when you perfect those things, everything else becomes easier too, which is the same for number four, push-ups. Now, I'm not gonna go into it again because I'm just gonna be re-explaining myself, but it's the same deal. If you're doing this, you should be able to do it to a decent degree if you're lifting weights. And it's the same with a push-up. Some people I know are in pretty decent shape and they can't do 12 press-ups. And to me, that says, well, you've done something wrong here. You haven't worked your muscles in the right way or your stimulizer, or your stabilizer muscles, excuse me, are all over the place. You should, I, I, look, I'm not gonna give you a number. I don't wanna say you should be able to do 20 uh, sort of naked dips, naked without weight, I mean, and, or 20 push-ups, because I don't know. But you should be able to do more than the average person because your ass has been in the gym. So let's just throw the next one in here as well. I never do a list like this, but I'm gonna do it. Well, we number three now, I can't remember. But the next one is pull-ups, right? It's exactly the same thing. When you go and do like police training or fireman training or fire person training, I should say, or anything like that, one of the things they'll get you to do is, you know, can you, can you push this stuff off you? So they'll you know, make you do a bench press, they'll make you do a lift. And you wanna be able to lift your own body weight. And again, I'm, I'm repeating myself here, but what better way to know if you can lift your own body weight but by putting your hands in the air, grabbing a bar and pulling yourself up. That's all you're doing is lifting your body weight. And of course, some people are so good at it, they can add weight, but don't worry about that. We'll get there down the line. But when we take these three things together, we take the dips, we take the push-ups, and we take the, uh, the, the pull-up, that to me are three things that you shouldn't be ignoring in any kind of journey where you are trying to put on muscle growth. Because when you keep things so functional, you keep things so basic, I just think it works. So rather than be down on the bench press going, oh, I've got to get 150 kilogram bench press or whatever, go over to the, to the pull-up bar on back day, of course, when you're doing it. I don't mean the middle of the chest day. But go over there, see what you can do. Maybe throw in a bunch of press-ups at the end of your chest workout. Throw in a bunch of dips at the end of your push workout. All of these kind of things, I think, is really going to take you over the line. And no... Well, people are doing it, but not as many as I think should, especially when they start out at the gym. And once again, don't make the same mistake as me. Don't overly focus on certain muscle groups because eventually we all get to the stage where we kind of look around and go, man, why didn't I go for symmetry? Because symmetry always helps. Now, I've totally lost where we are. I think we're number two. I don't know. But barbell rows I'm going to throw in there as well because they are the best compound exercise for your back along with deadlifts. But don't do what a lot of people do. Get the form right. Once again, don't ram 700 kilograms on the bar and do these stupid barbell rows. You need to row it into your chest, right? And you should feel it in the sort of mid part of your back. Some people feel it in their traps, like where you need to bend over properly. And you need to make sure you're bending over in the right way where you're protecting yourself, a little bit of a bend in the knees, but also flexing your latimus dorsi. Otherwise, it's pointless. But everyone should be able to do a decent barbell row. And some people don't like doing it because it hurts. That just means you're doing it right. So make sure that you keep doing it. I never see people doing barbell rows anymore, especially because they're such a versatile exercise. Even if you don't want to do a normal grip, supinate your grip, right? Just do that. And you can do it that way too. And not only are you going to get a bit of flare in your biceps, but I promise you, oh my gosh, it will send your back crazy. So barbell rows at a minute. Which brings us to number one, which is the bench press. But I am going to ram something down your throat as I did to somebody in the gym the other day. I don't even know if that's PG. In a nice way when they ask me, don't do flat bench press do incline. The best way it was ever explained to me is that if you do a flat bench press, for me personally, everyone's going to be a little bit different. It mostly works the middle of my chest, which is great because that's the, the, the part of the chest that everybody loves the most. But when you switch all of your chest exercises to incline, not only do you start working the upper chest, which sometimes is a forgotten body part, but I find honestly 90% of all incline exercises that I do also work the same part that the flat bench would do. So I'm like, well, why the hell would I ever do flat bench when I can do incline? Now, I think the best way to do it is obviously incorporate both because you want to ensure that you are stimulating your chest in as many ways as possible, but front load this. So if you are doing four chest exercise, 
do incline, do incline, do incline, and then you can finish with flat. I mean, right now, that's essentially what I'm doing when it comes to chest. And even if you have to go on the Smith machine and do incline because you're not strong enough and you want that support, that's absolutely fine too. I mean, that's more of an isolation exercise as opposed to a compound. But you don't need to worry about that. We're just talking about one specific thing. But I just wanted to leave you with that in your mind. When it comes to bench, when it comes to chest, incline, incline, incline. I think you will see twice the amount of growth and quite the amount of uh, stimulus that you would have done otherwise. And the only reason people are obsessed with a bench press is because it's just bodybuilding stereotypes. How much do you bench, bro? How much do you bench, bro? Who even cares? I don't think I've done more than an 80 kilogram bench press in years because there's no need because I focus on the incline and I focus on form. And when you kind of get up into that 12 um, to 12 rep range, like this is fine. My chest is going crazy. I'm seeing that it's being stimulated and you're protected too because believe you me, the number one cause of all shoulder injuries is terrible bench pressing. And that's not me having a go at you. Bench pressing is really hard, as is the entirety of the gym. So there you go. Eight best exercises to push muscle growth. Hopefully they do help. And I know you probably know all of those. But really try and refocus on them, I suppose. And remember what they're trying to do as opposed to going through the motions. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell ding ding. Some of it's going live. There will be video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Otherwise, go to mine.com for this time. It's time to get 10% off. Uh, my Fitness Palace of Love Tea in conjunction with Samsung Athletics. There's two links down there now. If you just want to buy my tea, click that one. But if you want to buy my tea or any of the Samsung Athletics teas, make sure you click the other one because now I'm just going to try and help them pimp out all their products because I wear them and I like them and I think they're good. At Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. If you want to support me that way, I'm also on Cam a lot of that was gibbish just go down into the description it will help you out but more importantly go to the gym today and if it's squats deadlifts shoulder press dips barbell rows pull-ups push-ups or the incline bench press remember all of this and make sure you kick your own ass